All right, so now we're going to do the opposite of what we've been doing. We are going to take uh, the formula that we see, and we're going to come up with the name. So we've been given a name. We've been able to write the formula. So now, we're, again, we're going to do the opposite of that. Uh, we are still naming ionic compounds. So we're talking a metal bonded to a nonmetal or a metal bonded to a polyatomic ion um, and a positive and a negative. Uh, so again, still look at it in that way. Uh, the steps for binary. So we're talking binary ionic compounds. You're going to write the name of the positive ion. And then the key here is, does it need a Roman numeral? Now, from what we've learned, if it's in this section right here, with the exception of those three right there, it needs a Roman numeral. Those three being zinc, cadmium, and silver. And these six down here in this spot right here. Those need Roman numerals. The three that don't are those three right here. But anything else, anything in the, this is, these are called the transition metals. Um, and those down here at the lower side of the uh, of the right hand side of the periodic table. So th those have to have a Roman numeral because they have more than one charge. So once we determine if it needs a Roman numeral, we figure out the Roman numeral, um, and then write the name of the negative ion, changing the ending to ide uh, for binary substances. Remember, we checked that anyway when we were going from the uh, name to the formula. That's how we determined that we had a binary substance. So now when we have the formula. We can look at it and see that it's binary because it's just two elements. Um, and then we can, um, again, name the substance. So here's our first four examples. So first thing to do is write the name of the positive. Mg is, I'm going to switch to a thinner, is magnesium. Does magnesium need a Roman numeral? No, it doesn't. It's in the second column on the periodic table. Uh, therefore, it does not need a Roman numeral. And then this is chlorine. So we say chloride. So magnesium chloride, is it okay to put a Roman numeral? It is not okay to put a Roman numeral. Magnesium only has the charge of plus two. The proper convention is when it only has one charge, you do not put a Roman numeral. Uh, lithium oxide would be the next one. Once again, lithium is in the first column. No Roman numeral. Oxygen becomes oxide, binary substance. Iron. Now, iron is one of the transition metals. It's in that middle part of the periodic table. It does have more than one charge. So what we have to do is check the formula and figure out what that charge is. Well, chlorine's a minus one, and we have two of them. So iron must be a positive two. Or you could check it like this, cross the exponents back up, and then check to see that the negative one's right. If the negative one's right, then that one's right as well. Uh, you're going to find out, though, as we do these, that if the negative one is wrong, then you have to do a little more uh, to figure out the positive charge. But that's an easy one. Iron, Roman numeral 2, chloride. And then the other way we learn to name that is iron can also be a plus 3. So this would be the lower charge. So this would be ferrous chloride. So ferrous chloride. Either or. Last one. That's cobalt. Now, cobalt is a transition metal. It needs a Roman numeral. And this would be cobalt-3. And then IO died, changing the ending to IDE. Why 3? Well, when we cross them back, iodine is a minus 1, and it is a minus 1. Or you could look at it as um, iodine is a minus 1, and you have 3 of them. So that's a total charge of negative 3. Therefore, you have to have a total charge of positive 3 uh, to balance it out and make it zero, like all ionic substances. All right, some other examples, some trickier ones. We have copper um, and oxygen, two different ones. Um, copper is what charge in this one? Well, it's copper oxide. If you cross this one back, you'd say plus one and minus one, and you'd call it copper one, but you'd be wrong. Why? Well, because oxygen's not a minus one. Oxygen is a minus two. So if oxygen's a minus two, copper must be a positive 2 in order to have that uh, correct. Let's go down instead of across then. So you can see here we're crossing a minus 2. This would be a positive 1. So this would be copper Roman numeral 1 oxide. A way you could check yourself is write the formula. So Cu with a plus 1 
oxygen's minus 2 across the charges, and you get C2O, and you know you're right. Another name to way, name this, or another way to name this one would be cupric oxide, from what we've learned, the higher charge, um, and this one would be cuprous oxide. All right, moving over to this one, another, again, a tricky one again. Why? Well, iron can't be a plus one, but we know nitrogen's a minus three, so therefore iron must be a positive three in this one, binary, nitride. Once again, we could name it ferric nitride, the higher of the two charges. Lead, sulfur, lead can't be a plus one. Uh, sulfur is a minus two, lead is a plus two, therefore. So this would be lead two sulfide, or it would be plumbus, the lower charge sulfide. So that's using both ways uh, to name those. All right, so now the next thing then is what happens if you don't have binary, but you have ternary uh, compounds? So you do the same thing. You name the positive ion. Don't forget Roman numerals. So again, anything in here, with the exception of those three, silver, zinc, and cadmium, and then those six right there after it, uh, all need Roman numerals. And then it's a little easier. You don't change anything when you're doing ternary. You need your polyatomic ion list, and you simply look it up. Uh, so the first one here is lithium. No Roman numeral, first column. Now, if you find yourself trying to be creative, chloro, oxy, something or other, you know you're doing it wrong. Remember, ionic substances are positive and negative ion. Positive ion is lithium. Negative ion is, have to look on our polyatomic ion list, and that one is named chlorate. So lithium chlorate for lithium and the negative ion chlorate. Next one, magnesium. Once again, don't be creative. Do I need a Roman numeral? Nope. So then NO3 is nitrate. So again, the two halves, the positive ion, negative ion. Magnesium is the positive ion. Nitrate is the negative ion. Lead. Now lead needs a Roman numeral. And lead would be, if you cross those, that's a positive 2, that's a negative 3. Is PO4 a negative 3? It is. Therefore, it is lead 2. And that PO4 is called phosphate. Barium, second column, no Roman numeral, silicate. Trickier ones, once again, where you're trying to figure out the correct Roman numeral. Copper, now the common mistake I see is people bring that 4 up there and say plus 4. That's not right. Remember, this is two halves of an ionic substance. That's the positive ion, that's the negative ion. If I had four sulfates, I would have parentheses four to show that I had four sulfates. I don't have four sulfates. Uh, what I have instead is one copper and one sulfate. So I need to kind of check the charges here. I'm going to cross ones, but that's not right. The easy thing to do is check the negative charge. Again, two halves. Sulfate's a minus two, therefore copper must be a plus two to balance the charges. We could just do the same thing here. Phosphate is a minus 3, so iron must be a plus 3, in this case, for the Roman numeral. So this one we could call cupric sulfate. This one would be ferric phosphate, the higher charge of the two. All right, so just some more examples. This one would be iron, Roman numeral 2, nitrate, 2 halves. That's a positive 2, that's a minus 1, and that is the correct charge. This is lithium oxide, binary substance, no Roman numeral. Lead needs a Roman numeral. Sulfate is a minus 2, therefore lead must be a positive 2 sulfate. And once again, we could call this plumbus sulfate. We could have called this one um, ferrous nitrate. Aluminum, aluminum does not need a Roman numeral. So five, binary, just two elements. And then the last one, copper. Now the charge, well, two halves, carbonate's a minus two. So in this case, copper is a positive two carbonate. And we could call that cupric, the higher of the charges, again, carbonate. Uh, so there it is. That's doing the opposite once you're given the formula. The biggest thing there is paying attention to the Roman numeral and don't try to be creative. 
Don't try to make up a nitro oxy something or other. Just look up the polyatomic ions um, and you know understand where that's coming from.